You've probably watched videos on other topics related to programming, but none of that matters if you don't actually know what you're trying to achieve. Are you confused by what I mean? Don't worry, I'll address that and more in this video. Out of the videos I've made so far, this one is the most important. This will apply to everything related to a programming career. So here's the framework. The framework is thinking of the pros and cons of each important decision you make in coding. After that, you also separate the pros and cons into long term and short term. For every choice you make in programming, there is something you will get out of it in the short term and something in the long term. I want to show a way of organizing everything you do in programming to code for the long term. All of this is from the fact that you have to be intentional. That means that behind everything you do, there has to be some bigger goal. If you do whatever you want, you can achieve results, but they won't be optimal results. If you have to look into the long term, then how can you accurately predict what is going to happen? And how do you even know what facts you can make predictions from? To solve that, you need something called situational awareness. The model that I'm talking about specifically is used everywhere from the military to nuclear power plants. The model has three levels, and the concept of the model is understanding the situation as a whole. That means that you consider everything in relation to each other. It's also about identifying blind spots, and because of this, it's pretty broad and applies to mostly everything, programming included. I'll modify the model a little bit so it applies even more to programming. This is an abstract framework that works more or less everywhere, and you could see if it applies to other areas you could think of as well. Another possible application is cybersecurity, for example. The first level is perception, which just means where are you currently. For coding, this could mean accurately de determining how far you are into programming. It could also mean what parts of programming you are good at. This level is just knowing all the facts important to programming, which are also important to you. You could be really good at object-oriented programming, for example, but you aren't great at encryption. Knowing what languages you know, how many years of experience you have, your job experience, or what your own ambitions are, are all variables you should probably consider. This level is about understanding the facts in the coding field. Some examples of facts not related to you that you need to consider are job openings for certain languages, what a language is used for, and what frameworks are popular or commonly used. You aren't supposed to make decisions just yet. Consider everything important related to your coding career and you are done for this level. The second level is using the information that you clarified at the first level. You could also call this utilizing. This level is about understanding everything related to you and coding. It's also about looking at what you know, where you are now, and seeing what you can do with it. It's about finding what could hold you back. You could have a part of programming you just can't understand. What you do about it depends on what you want to get out of coding. This is the decision-making part of the framework. This is the I am good at X and Y and therefore I could learn Z. This is about using the information that you have. A simplified example could be that you identified yourself as someone who is very good at Python and decent or above average at math, but not so great at lower level languages. By learning that the use case of Python is, for example, machine learning or AI and small scale projects, you realize you could do something like double down on your strengths and use Python for machine learning, which would require learning even more math. You could also address your limitations and learn a lower level language. You could see this as generalizing rather than specialization. This obviously isn't to say you can do both at some point, but these are just possible actions in the short term. And how do you decide what to do first? That's addressed in the next level, which is projection. You could also call it prediction. This means, if you keep doing what you are doing currently, where will you end up in 5 plus years? It's about justifying the actions in the second level. This allows you to truly rethink whether you are doing what you want to be doing. For me at least, programming while knowing that it serves a long-term purpose motivates me quite a bit. While the last step is the most important, it won't be an accurate prediction if you don't have the first two steps done. If I use the example that I just made, you could look down the two options from a projection standpoint. If I learn even more Python and AI, I could pursue a job in machine learning or AI in the next 5 to 10 years. This would involve doing a lot of math and earning close to whatever the average salary is right now. 
With the experience I gained from doing projects and having jobs in this field, I can continue doing something else. If I learn a lower level language like C++ and actively make projects, network and put myself out into the job market, I could try to get a more broad software development job. I would earn close to the average salary and gain experience which I could use maybe in another field. So to summarize, you gather information and consider which of it is important in the first step. In the second step, you combine the information to make decisions and in the final step, you justify those decisions with projections or with long-term rewards out of these decisions. Now I will show you how you can use this type of thinking to code and make projects with more confidence. I will also give examples of how to use this in really important programming related decisions. More specifically, I want to show the impact this framework can have on choosing a language, projects, libraries or frameworks. You could come up with a hundred more examples, but these seem like some of the more important ones. With the three examples that I will give, you can apply the framework, except the first step will be pretty much the same across all three. The second and third step is where you will actually make your decisions. Picking a language can be one of the most important decisions, especially if this is your first language, and there is definitely a lot to consider. If I picked Python as an example, here's some of the pros. An obvious pro is that it's a lot easier to learn. You can make meaningful projects a lot earlier, and by this I mean something you will actually utilize. These would both be pros in the short term. And a long term pro is that Python doesn't seem to be dying out anytime soon. And another long term pro is the massive amount of libraries Python has. But a long term con could be that you don't really learn as much when compared to a lower level language. I would recommend that you consider the pros and cons for you personally and see what's the most convincing. This is about your own interpretation of this. Another extremely important example is projects. The most obvious thing to consider is complexity. This is also relative to what you are used to. To give an example, let's say I make a project way outside of my comfort zone and it's very complex for me. Some of the short term cons would be a risk that you won't be able to finish it and taking a lot longer than if it were simpler. But a long term pro is that it would look much more impressive on your resume. And a different thing to consider is reusability. If you can reuse the project in the future, there is a massive long term pro. The applicability of the project also matters. If you use the project to explore certain fields you are interested in and you think you will utilize, like encryption, then that is a big long term pro. And the final category, which is choosing libraries or frameworks. In libraries and frameworks, you have to consider a lot of things, namely scalability. This hopefully only applies in the long term, otherwise you are, with exceptions, doing something very wrong. You also have to consider security, which is more long term as well. What I mean is things like encryption. Complexity is important too, and it is more short term, I would say. By complexity, I mean how long do you have to learn a library before you can actually apply it to a project. And finally, library size. Although this mostly applies to embedded systems and small hardware. If you don't have a strict size limit, then it's probably better to pick more high level libraries since you will implement features faster. And now I've said everything I want to talk about and I hope you have a bit more confidence in learning programming. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.